Good morning. It is Thursday morning and it is time for our devotions. <coughs> I would invite you to join with me as we pray together our invocation. Almighty God, in whom I find life, health, and strength, and through whose mercy I am clothed and fed, grant unto me a thankful and a faithful heart, in the name and the Spirit of Christ. Amen. Again, the theme for this week is God supplies our every need. We're going to continue in the 12th chapter of Luke, uh, beginning with verse 13 and going down through verse 21. And uh, again, in my Bible, and every Bible uh, either doesn't have like headings before stuff, or uh, could be very different headings. But in my Bible, it says the parable of the rich fool. And... Um, and it, it uh, that is where it kind of comes to its conclusion. But the beginning is kind of interesting as well. Uh, <clears throat> and this is this is the break in this conversation or in this in this passage, because if you recall, um, the crowd had gathered and they were uh, there thousands, uh, according to the scripture, and they were stomping on each other's feet. But uh, Jesus in the midst of all this, kind of turns and gathers his disciples around him, and he gives them some very specific um, teaching. And it is, and it's definitely located, you know, right there. It's right in that core group. He hasn't really reached out to the crowd yet. And so, um, <clears throat> again, there may have been other stuff. Certainly every word that Jesus spoke was not written down. Uh, there may have been a uh, sort of a, a ramp time between when he was speaking specifically to the disciples and sp then speaking to the crowd. But I think it, it, it almost is uh, more appropriate, and, and I'm not sure that's the word, but uh, uh, I, I think it's close. Uh, it's more appropriate to see this as a, a, a continuous flow. He's talking to the disciples and all of a sudden he gets this interruption which you'll see as I read. Uh, again, starting with verse 13 of chapter 12 of Luke. Someone in the crowd said to him, see, you see what I mean? It's like it, the, he's talking to the disciples, and then all of a sudden somebody from the crowd goes, hey, I got a question, you know, and uh, he says, uh, someone in the crowd said to him, teacher, tell my brother to divide the family inheritance with me, you know, and uh, can't, can't you just see that happening? Have you ever been interrupted when you're in a serious conversation with someone and someone else comes along with something that's so, that's, um, well, it wasn't, it wasn't petty. I mean, his concern perhaps wasn't petty, but uh, in comparison to what Jesus was teaching the disciples, that this great spiritual truth, this guy's going, I need, I need my share of the inheritance and my brother won't give it to me. Tell him to do that. Um, we don't know any of the other circumstances. Certainly, uh, this would have been a uh, younger brother speaking to an older brother because the older brother would have had the responsibility of distributing uh, an inheritance. Um, the, uh, the standard reality in that time frame was that um, the oldest brother would get two-thirds, and then the last one-third was divided up between however many other brothers there were. So the older brother had the inheritance and uh, and just was choosing, at least for whatever reason at that point, not to give the younger brother his portion. So, uh, <clears throat> and Jesus responds to that question. He says, friend, who set me to be a judge or arbitrator over you? And that's an interesting question, isn't it? Um, because, of course, Jesus is the judge. And, uh, you know, it's a... Uh, uh, it's kind of a it's kind of an interesting uh, tongue-in-cheek comment I think by Jesus uh, at this point you know this guy says tell my brother to give me my share of the inheritance and Jesus says well why do you think I'm a judge you know kind of a deal anyway he says who set me to be a judge or arbitrator over you and he said to them take care now see he's he's transitioning from this individual conversation back to the whole crowd and he says to them uh, take care, be on your guard against all kinds of greed, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. And so 
<clears throat> you know, the people who heard this question probably immediately in their minds went, ooh, his brother must be greedy. Some other people might have said, well, give him a chance to get, you know, who knows what the circumstances were. The guy wanted his money. He wanted it now. Jesus was seen as a, as a, a, a very good teacher, uh, a rabbi, someone who had spiritual sense, those kind of things, um, by people who didn't have a clue who he was. So Jesus says, you know, who do you think I am that I'm going to be the judge or the arbitrator over you? And, uh, and again, I think there's a lot of tongue in cheek in that. But anyway, um, so people, you know, perceived this and, and it, it, either way, it was kind of a simple, um, greedy thing that uh, no matter what their perspective was, greed could be seen in it very clearly. And then Jesus tells them this parable. And the truth of the matter is that um, they would have had a much harder time seeing the level of, of uh, Jesus' comments on greed uh, out of this parable than they would have out of the, the uh, d discrepancy between these two brothers. Uh, because at one level, there doesn't appear to be greed. However, uh, you know, Jesus has something else to say about it. So he tells him this parable. <clears throat> the land of a rich man produced abundantly. And he thought to himself, what should I do? For I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, I will do this. I will pull down my barns and build larger ones. And there I will store all my grain and my goods. And, and here's where the kicker comes in. And I will say to my soul, soul, you have ample goods laid up for many years. Relax, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, you fool. That's not a light comment. Um, referring to someone as a fool uh, biblically is is a very, very harsh judgment, okay? We, we fluff it off like it's nothing, but biblically it is something, and, uh, and we're warned not to call people fools. So anyway, God says to him, you fool. So God's really saying something here. This very night, <coughs> your life is being demanded of you. In other words, you're going to die tonight. And all the things you have prepared, whose will they be? So it is with those who store up treasures for themselves, but are not rich toward God. And, and so, you know, what's what's the question here? Well, I, I think, um, you know, there's a number of things. One is he is satisfying his own soul. Um, there's a level at which our souls absolutely belong to God. And so if we sort of take dominion over them, um, and, and claim them really as our own, which we have a right to do. Uh, you know, we do, have, we do have free will. We can do that. But the problem is that uh, eventually, because of the nature of sin being in the world, our souls are going to have to stand before God. And uh, at that point, uh, we will discover that we don't have ultimate control that we have control now, and we make decisions based on that control, but what is behind that decision? You know, why is it that we choose to make the choices we do? <clears throat> and it is often, as demonstrated here, a matter of uh, self-sufficiency. It's a matter of self-satisfaction. It revolves around self, 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 self. <clears throat> and you see that, you know, you see that same thing in the question that the brother brings. Um, he wants his share of the inheritance. Is his brother being greedy and keeping it all for himself, hoping that, you know, he won't ever have to give it to his brother? Maybe so. But it's self, 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 you know. Um, and so we get down to this point, and, and this guy has satisfied himself. He has... Uh, you know, he's had had this, you can see what's what's going to happen. He sees this huge crop and more than he had imagined possible, and <clears throat> certainly more than he has uh, a place to uh, store. And isn't it interesting? He doesn't just build another barn. He tears his barns down and completely replaces them. He tears what he's got down and completely replaces them. So it's, it's as if he is, 
having a brand new start. He is rejecting what has been passed. He is claiming this place, and now I'll live rich and happy for the rest of my life, and everything will be good and wonderful and glorious and all of that stuff, right? Not so much. He, he gets it all done. And he gets all of his uh, his grain and harvest and cattle and whatever in, into his uh, into his barns, and he is self satisfied. He has done it all himself, and he is satisfied. And he is sitting there saying, "Well, aren't I just satisfied? And I don't have to worry. I don't have to, you know, I don't have to have anybody else at any level in control of my life." Because I've got it made. I did it myself. And then God, you know, says to him, you're a fool. This, you know, and is it, is he a fool because he built new barns? You know, no, not necessarily. Is he a fool because he planted well and, and worked the ground well and had a huge harvest? Does that make him a fool? Of course not. That doesn't even make him greedy. It, building the barns for storage didn't make him greedy. What is the problem is his self-satisfaction. And so he's, uh, he's perfectly content and he perceives that he himself has done it. And, uh, and he is satisfied now for life, you know, in effect. And it's like, well, I, I'm glad for you right now. But the fact is tonight, you know, your life is going to be demanded of you. Um, and everything that you have done is going to somebody else. So, you know, when we get down to the end, it, it, and Jesus says, so it is with those who store up treasures for themselves, but are not rich toward God. It, it isn't a matter that this guy sinned in having a good harvest. It didn't a matter of, of sinning in, in taking care of that harvest. What's his sin? It was in self-satisfaction. It was in saying, I've done this myself. Now, soul, you know, I'm in control of you, and you can relax. Everything's cool. And God said, everything is not cool. Uh, and, uh, and you very foolishly have ignored what? His responsibilities? Not necessarily. But who has he ignored? He's ignored God. Why? Because God is the one to whom our souls will answer. And so he has dodged that and he has very joyfully given himself credit for everything. And, uh, you know, again, it's that self-satisfaction. Folks, there is no real satisfaction uh, that alienates God, uh, God's, you know, presence in our lives. <clears throat> how, how could he have been rich toward God? Well, committing... Um, you know, one of the things that's interesting here is uh, Jesus doesn't talk about his uh, his tithe. You know, uh, he stores it all, and and that's okay. That's a that's a Jamie um, comment. Okay, that's not a biblical comment, but it strikes me that there was no reference to him. You know, making his. Uh, it just sounds like he took it all, stuck it in the you know in the bars, and was happy. Um, but he's, he has no, throughout this whole thing, does he thank God for a huge harvest? No. Does he thank God that he can, even before the harvest is in, build these new barns, which suggests that he, you know, he was certainly all right, financially, at least at that point. And, <clears throat> and the answer to that question is no. You know, he doesn't, he doesn't thank God for anything he thanks himself. He is very rich toward himself and very miserly toward God. And so there's any number of things in life that can cause that issue to come up in our own lives. It might be money, it might be friends, uh, it might be jealousy, all of those things, you know, that, that focus, really focus back on us instead of on our relationship with God. Uh, anything that gets in the way of that is truly idolatry. Anything that gets in the way of our relation, well, it, whether it's self-idolatry, it's idolatry of somebody else, it's idolatry of money. Um, you know, uh, idol worship is, uh, is is still alive and very, 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 very healthy. And, and, uh, and perhaps few places in the world that uh, have it at the same level that we do here in the United States. So... 
you know, here's here's a commentary about uh, less about financial things, although certainly our finances need to be submitted to God as well. I highly recommend that you do that. Highly recommend tithing. Um, <clears throat> but uh, it's really about our attitude and our relationship with God. And isn't it interesting, if you put it together the way I suggested, that, you know, he's talking to his disciples quietly, and then somebody yells from the crowd, Hey, Jesus, I need an opinion. <laughs> you know, and uh, uh, it, again, just totally self-serving. And, uh, you know, what is it in our lives that stands between us and a recognition of who and what God really is in our lives? Well, think about that today in your own life and uh, see if there's any barns that you've built, any, uh, any storage that you've put away, any, um, anything that is standing between you and the sovereignty of God in your life where you have become the king in your life and you have rejected God's leadership in your life and uh, if you ask God he'll show you those places where that is occurring and uh, and will help you to understand the need uh, bottom line you're gonna have to decide what you're gonna do about it and God will help you with that if you will allow him but again it comes out of a that ability comes out of a relationship with God rather than a self-satisfied relationship with yourself. So, uh, think about that today and uh, find where God is, is calling you as a result of listening to this uh, Facebook post. And, you know, it has nothing to do with me. It has to do with you and God and whatever God is telling you. So, will you receive the benediction? You've been in communion with your Lord. Go forth now in strength and assurance that he goes with you. Amen. Just a quick comment. Uh, tomorrow we will be picking up the same area of Luke. We're going to start with verse 22 of chapter 12, and we'll go down through 34. So if you want to look ahead, um, hey, go for it. That would be a great idea, and I encourage you to do so. So tomorrow's going to be Luke 12, 20 through 2 through 34. Have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow morning.